the title of this homily is crisis of faith no I am not talking about faith in God I am talking rather about a crisis of faith in humanity as the more serious crisis yesterday somebody passed on to me the TED lecture of a 99 year old survivor of the Holocaust in Germany the old man shared about the cruelties that he had to go through from the time that he was arrested and how their house was burned down by the Nazi soldiers when they found out that he was a Jew he was only 11 years old he was home alone in the company of his dog who was brutally murdered right in front of him because the dog tried to protect the boy for a while he said he thought he had lost faith in humanity he survived the concentration camps but considered himself a broken and a very unhappy man after that he kept to himself and refused to even talk about the brutalities that remained very vivid in his memory he said he would have remained very bitter all his life if he had not fallen in love with a woman named Flore whom he married and who gave her a son whom he named Michael it was love he said and the sight of this newborn child that made him smile again and made him dream again and it was then that he realized that the nightmare that he had been through had not really succeeded in destroying his humanity and his faith in it after all he said that as he held his child in his arms he saw in him a whole new vision of a better world what renewed his faith in humanity he said was a basic desire to make just one human being happy and deserving of all his love and the right to live a dignified life from then on he began to speak about human goodness and what it takes to prevent that human or basic human goodness from being destroyed he said and let me quote him in spite of all the cruelties that I experienced I do not hate anybody hate he said is a disease which may destroy your enemy but will also destroy you in the process you know his lecture suddenly reminded me of one of the best videos I have ever seen about the COVID pandemic and it was set not in the present but in the future sort of looking back to 2020 and retelling it to his son as a bedtime story from a little book entitled the great realization please take time to watch this four minute video now tell me the one about the mark scan then i'll go to bed but oh my boy you're growing weary sleepy thoughts about your head please that one's my favorite i promise just what's more okay Snuggle down, my boy, though I know you know full well. The story starts before then, in a world I once would dwell. It was a world of waste and wonder, of poverty and plenty, back before we understood why hindsight's twenty twenty. You see, the people came up with companies to trade across all lands, but they swelled and got much bigger than we ever could have planned. We'd always had our wants, but now it got so quick, you could have anything you dreamed of in a day, and with a click. We noticed families had stopped talking, 
That's not to say they never spoke, but the meaning must have melted and the work-life balance broke. And the children's eyes grew squarer, and every toddler had a phone. They filtered out the imperfections, but amidst the noise, they felt alone. And every day the skies grew thicker, till you couldn't see the stars. So we flew in planes to find them, while down below, we filled our cars. We'd drive around all day in circles. We'd forgotten how to run. We swapped the grass for tarmac, shrunk the parks till there were none. We filled the sea with plastic, because our waste was never capped. Until each day when you went fishing, you'd pull them out, already wrapped. And while we drank and smoked and gambled, our leaders taught us why. It's best to not upset the lobbies. More convenient to die. But then in 2020, a new virus came our way. The governments reacted and told us all to hide away. But while we all were hidden, amidst the fear and all the while, the people dusted off their instincts. They remembered how to smile. They started clapping to say thank you and calling up their mums. And while the car keys gathered dust, they would look forward to their runs. And with the skies less full of voyagers, the earth began to breathe. And the beaches bore new wildlife that scuttled off into the seas. Some people started dancing. Some were singing. Some were baking. We'd grown so used to bad news, but some good news was in the making. And so when we found the cure, and were allowed to go outside. We all preferred the world we found to the one we'd left behind. Old habits became extinct and they made way for the new and every simple act of kindness was now given its due. But why did it take a virus to bring the people back together? Well, sometimes you've got to get sick, my boy, before you start feeling better. Now lie down and dream of tomorrow and all the things that we can do. And who knows, if you dream hard enough, maybe some of them will come true. We now call it the Great Realization. And yes, since then there have been many, but that's the story of how it started and why hindsight's 2020. Sometimes you have to get sick first before you start getting well. You know, if I had done that video myself, I would probably have entitled it The Great Awakening. He makes us imagine ourselves looking back to 2020, perhaps a century from now, and tells us how a virus had awakened humanity from its deep slumber. Well, today's gospel is about Jesus and his difficulty with his fellow Jews who are looking for a Messiah and are unable to see him despite all that he is doing. Their real problem is they cannot imagine him looking human. The Messiah looking human like any of them. In short, their real crisis is they have lost faith not in God but in humanity. Isn't it ironic that to save humanity, God had to assume a human form. It is by becoming truly human himself that God restores humankind's faith in the basic goodness of our humanity. I know there are many instances when we feel a profound need for God and we even resent his apparent absence. But have have we ever considered that if we need God, God needs us too in order to be present with us? Look, in order to redeem us, He decided first of all to become one of us. He took on our human form in Jesus of Nazareth. And it is in amazement that we often confess our faith in God. But shouldn't we be equally amazed about God's faith in your humanity, in our humanity. You know, the more I study the Bible, 
the more I realized that Judaism also shared in the loss of faith in humanity. That is why we associate humanity with sinfulness, with being fallen. But Christianity would change all of this. It would embrace the narrative of our being fallen, but it would twist it in order to give it an altogether new meaning, a more positive one. Falling like the seed that is buried on the ground in order to rise again and bear much fruit. That is in John 12, 24. This is what I find most beautiful about our Christian faith. Our God does not save us from a vacuum. He did not feed the 5,000 from nothing. He needed the generosity of that poor boy who offered his five loaves and two fish. He did not just raise the paralytic from his mat. He needed the friends to bring him to his presence, even if they had to climb the roof and make a hole in it. He did not just convert humanity with a wave of a hand. He needed ordinary people, ordinary men and women, like Peter and Paul, James and John, Mary Magdalene and Mary of Bethany, in order to witness to him. His raw material for his new creation is still our humanity, the same humanity but humanity recreated. Humanity fallen but raised up again. Awakened from slumber. Humanity now given its best form in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who invites us also to have faith in our humanity and to take part in restoring it to its proper dignity. Brothers and sisters, May we indeed look back at this year, 2020, many years from now, and tell the next generation how a crisis reawakened in us our faith in our own humanity.